Giants hung around and rallied to beat the Saints in overtime 27-21. New Orleans now 2-2 two and two a quarter into the season. Joining us to talk about what happened is WWLTV.com sports columnist and host of the Saints Happy Hour podcast, Ralph Marlborough. Thank you for being with us. Leslie, I knew we were in for bad things yesterday when I walked into the dome with my mother and she looked up at the ring of honor and she said, the saints have misspelled Morton Anderson's name. What yeah, are they yeah. doing? Yeah. Uh, saints, you gotta cover it up. You can't just dim the lights. Everyone noticed. I'm just saying, um, it was, it, Leslie, it felt like a piano falling on us. It was like nine minutes to go. They're up 11. Me and my mom are planning like where we're going to eat after the game before I catch a flight home. And then it's, Within three plays, the Saints had like driven the car into the ditch. They were on fire. Yeah, it escalated um, so quickly. So, it did so escalate quickly. quickly. Against a team that hadn't won a single game. What happened? Well, it was curious. Sean Payton, he, you know, his his play calling yesterday didn't confuse me. But uh, his kicking decisions made my brain hurt. And his explanation after the game left me even more confused. He passed on a 47-yard field goal and went for it in the first quarter. That's cool. It was fine. But then he goes, he lets his kicker attempt, attempt a 58-yard field goal later, and he says after the game, well, at some point we have to make a field goal. Yes, Sean, eventually you have to make a field goal. But he felt like a, a tourist at the blackjack table at the casino who, like, is can't decide what he wants to do. He's like, I'm going to double down. I'm not going to double down on 11 when the dealer has a three, but when I have a four, I'm going to double down because I got to win a hand. He felt like a blackjack dealer, a blackjack player who didn't know what he was doing. It was all very, very odd and his challenges and uh, it wasn't a good day. The Saints got out coached uh, yesterday uh, all day. They couldn't get pressure on Daniel Jones. He threw, he threw 40 times, wasn't sacked, was only hit was only hit uh, six times. I felt like he had all day to throw. He was making cell phone calls, doing selfies while he was back there to pass. Yeah, and the, uh, defense, the defense has been the star all season. And they did give up yeah. some really big, <clears throat> explosive plays that were the difference in the game. Well, and that's the thing with the Saints. Their margins are so small because they ha they play this sort of style where they we'll play defense, we're going to run the ball and win these close games. And when they give up explosive plays, it really sets them back. The thing with the Saints that was, I, I, you could you could hear it in Sean Payton's after, voice after the game is, they ran for 170 yards. Yeah, Kamara they had did an amazing game. Yeah, they did everything they wanted to do. They just couldn't pressure the Giants. And like you said, they give up the two explosive plays. You know, the thing with the Saints defense, looking at it yesterday, they really, really miss Daniel Onyemata and, and Marcus Davenport. Sure. And I think with the Saints, the next two weeks until they start getting those guys back, it's just going to sort of be like the worst mystery movie we've ever watched as far as the defensive line. Because this is two weeks, Leslie, where the defensive line, they sort of needed to be on a milk carton where they're missing. You know, <laughs> the, Carolina, they didn't pressure hardly at all. And then yesterday. So that's two out of four weeks where – we, we have this expectation that this defensive line and this defense is great, but the pressure's not really there. And I think they just need their guys back. And let's get to the offense quickly. We're running out of time. Mm. But they, they're not necessarily platooning Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill, but they are rotating them quite a bit. What do you think of that? Because I think of the old saying, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. <clears throat> It's very strange that the goal line plays with Taysom where they run the quarterback power. At the goal line, it's unstoppable. And in theory, Leslie, when you get down near the goal line, when everything's condensed and bunched up and the defense is really knowing it's coming, it should be harder to run, but it's more successful in the red zone than it is on other parts of the field. And I'll just say, they ran the pace and play last week to close out New England. They ran it again yesterday. It didn't work. So if it, you can't really complain, but they've, they've got to figure out some things on offense. They, they need to be better in third down. They can't, they can't, when they get in third and two and three, that's where they're supposed to thrive. And yesterday, 
they didn't in really key spots in the first quarter and late in the game. And we're seeing that touchdown right there by Taysom Hill. That was just incredible. He, he's amazing in the red zone. But if, I, if I'm Alvin Kamara, I'm a little upset, too, because <laughs> I'm doing all the work. And then we get down to the end zone and you're handing it off to somebody else. Well, right. Alvin Kamara is upset. Jameis, he's got uh, incentives in his contract. I'm sure he wants to sure. get those touchdowns, too. Yeah. But the closing with the Saints is we said in the summer with all the injuries and Michael Thomas being out and, and, a, and a bunch of things hitting, we were like, just get to three and three for Halloween. We get everybody back and maybe they can make a run. They just have to find a way to win one of these next two games right. and be three and three when Tom Brady and the Bucks come for Halloween and they can still have – uh, a, a really interesting 2021. All right, Ralph, we're so out of time. Thank you very much. Thank, we got to go. Guys, we'll be you. right back. Stay with us.